Welcome back to part two of the fixed asset setup, uh, respectively, um, how of the setup, how to use two different kind of um, accounting. So how to use parallel accounting within uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012. Um, in the first part, we actually did the whole setup for the acquisition and the depreciation, and we also already run them. So if you haven't watched yet the part one, maybe you should watch it because before you move on with this video. Great. So um, just a short recap. So where are we? So we have uh, made the acquisition and we made two depreciations. So for the local one and for the operations um, one as well. So we are at the state that we have a net book value in the local in the local um, gap. So let's yeah let's do it this way in the local gap of minus sum of this so that we have here a netbook value of 997.17 and we have a netbook value in the US gap of this year um, plus plus uh, this account here would be actually this and plus sorry no plus minus some of this so we can always track the netbook value and then of course plus some of this minus some of this so as always i did something wrong um so not plus um yeah of course i've got, got here minus some of this here of course great so okay um, as i said always the um, local accounting local accounting just the layer current um, the us gap accounting current plus layer operations so we have actually a total depreciation in the um, operations layer of um so basically in the local view of 20.83 and in us gap you have 20.83 minus 20.83 plus 11.67, so 11.67. Um, I also just quickly, let's quickly have a look how it looks like here in kind of, let's say, the fixed asset balances. So it means nothing else than you always, in every report, of course, you're just going to run the books. So this means nothing else than I'm just choosing here. I want to see the local view. If you would have different kind of depreciation um, profiles, so if you would need to have several um, books for your local gap, uh, I would always recommend actually to use, let's say, to do it this way, for example, degressive 35 and always with the L underscore, because then you can actually do it here this way that you say L underscore and then star in the end. But in my case, how I set it up this way, because we just have straight line, uh, I'm just using here just one book for the local and one book for group. So it means nothing else than if I just run such kind of a fixed asset balance report, then I have in here, if I'm using here the book local, I do have exactly here the net book value of 979 and a depreciation of 20.83. So 20.83 and the netbook value of 979.17. So exactly like I have here. And if I change here the book to the book US. And if I rerun it. Then I should see here the 11.67 and the netbook value of 988.33. Um, as I already mentioned in the prior part, never use the book set R lock because it's just the reversal. It is showing always exactly the same value as the local one. Um, yeah, but it is in the end totally redundant and not needed for any kind of thing. So in here we have, in here we should have uh, exactly the same figures as we have in the local one. So with the 20.83. Brilliant. So let's move on. So we are um, now going to uh, add the posting rules for the scrap and um, that I don't need to do it um, two times. I'm also going to uh, set up the, the, the sales and the scrap at once. So that I just need to yeah, I'm going to set up in the end just the sales one because it is exactly the same as in the scrap one, but just with one posting type more in the end. Good. So um, let's go back to the uh, fixed asset posting profiles. 
so we already set up the acquisition, the depreciation. As I said, I'm normally not working with um, acquisition adjustments, also not with depreciation account, um, adjustments, also not with revaluations, also not with write down, blah, 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 blah. Um, just in some cases with extraordinary depreciation. Um, why I'm not using those three those things? Because um, I haven't had yet the requirement. It was always that we could have just that we just did um, several acquisitions. In Switzerland, it's quite often. Also in other countries, I'm, nor I'm normally just using those types in here. Good. So let's come to disposal sales. <clears throat> um, yeah. So as always, it is the same logic as always. Let's add it first here. The local one on group level and then the machines and on the main account i'm of course going to post it against the fixed asset accounts and in the offset account i'm using here the net book value uh, net book value no not the net book value i'm actually going I'm actually going to use here, of course, the sales account because I'm on the sales one. So I'm choosing the 8100. So sales out of disposal from fixed assets or sales, sales from fixed assets. Good. <clears throat> As I already mentioned in the first part, um, the set R log posting profile is always the exact opposite of the local one. Only if the fixed asset account is included, then it is the 99995. So in this case, the opposite here, a uh, 8100 is not the fixed asset account. Um, 1500 is the fixed asset account. Therefore, I'm going to use here the 99995. And the GRP, uh, not GRP, the US group MCH is always the exact same posting as in the local one. But as well, if there is the fixed asset account, then we are using the 9995. So 9995 against. 8100. Great. I'm also going to add here directly the disposal scrap posting because afterwards in the disposal um, posting profiles, I'm just going to set up sales. Uh, in the scrap, it is exactly the same, but just with one posting um, type less. Good. Um, disposal, disposal scrap. So disposal scrap, well, it is in the end um, more or less the same as before more or less so it's one main account is the same so the fixed asset account but the other account is not the same so almost the same um let's use here of course again the fixed asset account and this time of course the netbook value cost account um well again the set r lock on group mch the exact opposite only if it is the fixed asset account and it is 9995 and us group machines um 995 and so it is always always the same and if you have um 20,000, if you have 20 different fixed asset groups, you can do it for each fixed asset group, of course. Great. So, um, yeah, this is it with the with these posting types in here. But of course, since there are automatically other posting types involved in um, a disposal, we also need to set up here um, the disposal, the disposal um, posting postings. So, um, this means here nothing else than let's add first here the local again. So, but posting type by posting type. So I'm actually normally, as so I'm always working actually just on netbook values, um, as we on scrap, I'm just going to use three posting types because I'm always going to put all the depreciations back onto the fixed asset account at first. And the second one would be then to transfer the net book value from the fixed asset account down to the net book value account. So in the end, in the end, what I'm what I'm going to do with, with my setup, I'm going to show you is that uh, AX is just going to put the whole accumulated depreciation. So just quickly mark it somehow like this uh, back to the fixed asset account. And in a second step, he's going then to move the netbook value account, the netbook value amount from the fixed asset to the netbook value cost account. So, of course, I'm just showing you now in the in the uh, local in the local layer. Um, in here, it is in the end then more or less um, 
it's just a difference then of course so this is basically logic how i'm going to set it up therefore i just need to have um three posting types for scrap and four posting types of course the sales value for the sales then so just one posting type more in the end just going to quickly delete those again and so okay yeah so just to show to just to tell just to tell you what i'm going to do i'm not going to distinguish between um loss and gain um what you always have to do is to set up the post where the, the depreciation for prior year and this year because there is quite often the case that you have um depreciations from prior year good so for the depreciation let's start um with that we are going to use here on main account we are using the accumulated depreciation account and we are going to add it onto the fixed asset account as i said we're just going to move it from here up to here um well for the set r lock whoops for set r lock the same logic as always uh if it is as the exact opposite if it is the fixed asset account 995 if not then the real account good and for and for the um us value model And for the US value model, of course, as well with the logic US group machines. And then I'm going to use here the exact same posting, but if it is the fixed asset account, then not the fixed asset account, but the 99995. Um, I need to do exactly the same for the depreciation of this year. So 1509, 150915 here in local set R lock group machines. Um, this year would be 9995, 159, and US group, group machines this year. And this one would be 105995. Okay, good. Um, the posting type from this year's depreciation and prior year's depreciation is um, the same in my case. We're not going to distinguish it. I'm not going to distinguish it at all. Good. So um, we have then the next posting type, which is also relevant for scrapping. So I'm, um, which is called net book value. So as I said, we are going to transfer at first the whole accumulated depreciation back onto the fixed asset account and move then the net book value down to the NBV costs. So I'm choosing here net book value and in here on the main account, uh, the fixed asset account and as the offset account of the net book value, I'm going to choose here the net book value cost account. And then, as always, exactly the same logic. So I'm going to use set R lock um, again. Net book value. If it is if it is the fixed asset account, then it is not the fixed asset account. If it is not the fixed asset account, then it is um, the same account. So here 995 because yeah, and here this one. And for the US, exactly the same posting with the difference that if it is the fixed asset account, then it is 9995. Yeah, so quite simple. So this would actually be the whole posting you need to set up for one fixed asset group for scrapping. So this means nothing else than in the, if you are in the fixed asset posting profiles in tab scrap, which is at the moment, of course, blank. You For one fixed asset group, you would need to create all these transactions or all these postings in here, and then the scrapping would already work. <laughs> for one fixed asset group and uh, if you would have 50 fixed asset groups then you're um, you are doing quite often because you need to put the sales parameters as well and um, so yeah it's quite a lot of work so look that you get kind of a import for such posting profiles actually because otherwise it can take hours if there are if there are too many um if there are too many fixed asset groups good um the last one so the last fixed asset group which needs to be which needs to be added is um, of course then the one for um, the sale so which means nothing else than and we're going going to use here now the sales so group machines the posing type is um, sales value and the sales value that we are going we're going to post this against the fixed asset account and then of course again 
against the sales value. It looks a little bit strange that it is the fixed asset account in here, I know, but it is the case. Let's go to MCH, again, sales value, and then again, the same logic, 9995. This was wrong. 8100, of course, and US group machines sales value, and we have here 995. 8100. So that, that, okay, this is good. Um, so I hope I did everything correct. So there is no 15. So let's just quickly check. It's quite important just to check it, um, to check that you don't, that you never have the fixed asset account in the not lock. And yeah, should be fine, I hope. Great. So this means. We can actually do now um, the sales. I'm normally doing, actually, um, I recommend to do the sales always over free text invoice, because also free text invoice is, of course, um, integrated into the fixed assets. So let's go to accounts receivables. And in here, to the free text invoices. And we are now going to create a new fixed, a new um, free text invoice. And the nice thing is, the only thing I need to do is here to choose my fixed asset, selling of my of my fixed asset. Uh, well, I did the depreciation already on the, on the 30th of June, so I'm just going to sell it on 2nd of July. Uh, sales tax group, item sales tax group, I don't use any sales tax, and I'm going to sell it for 2000 let's say. Um, I know here as well, it looks strange that the, in here is the fixed asset account, but um, it is correct. I'm going to post it. Um, so I post the invoice, I'm not going to print it. And AX is working. And it's processing and my lo lovely button that I really love is appearing now. And we wait and he posted it. Great. So let's have a look at the great posting that AX did. So in the invoice journal and then uh, on the voucher. So um, it means nothing else than yeah, AX actually did the posting for all three value models. So because everything was derived. So all those are now sold. Uh, but you will see it from the voucher that there are quite a lot of postings. Uh, and my recommendation is uh, never ever have a look in here and try to figure out, well, what is this? What is this? What is this? It takes quite a while because, because uh, AX is going to post summarized values based on based on a posting layer. And therefore, in the operations, it is quite uh, complex to understand each of these posting. It is much more easier if you just click Ctrl and T, put it into an Excel, and just analyze it based on a pivot table. So, um, well, what do we expect? So before we create here the pivot table, let's just think about what do we expect in the end. So just in a summarized way. So, well, we would expect Let's use this kind of different color. We would expect that, of course, in here, the balance of the fixed asset account is in the end zero. And of course, we also expect that in here, the accumulated depreciation is zero. And of course, that we have on the net book value 7.7.17. So this is our expectations, of course, that, uh, he he, um, that he balanced the fixed asset account, that he balanced the accumulated depreciation account, and that he posted the, the cost of the fixed asset here onto the net book value cost. And I will, I, I sold it. So um, let's quickly add here another T account. So, um, right. So, customer. And then we sold it actually for 2000. So we would expect that we have here on the customer 2000 and against the sales value of 2000 in here. What else do we expect? Well, in the operations layer, we would expect that um, 9995, nothing, because there is nothing to do in here. But we would expect that he is going actually to balance the accumulated depreciation. So because here, netbook value is uh, 988.33, so a little bit higher 
than in here. So we would end we we would expect that from a US gap perspective that we have a net book value on the net book value cost of 988.33. Um, therefore we ex would expect here and of course the posting of just the difference because once again, uh, operations layer is just the difference between local and the US gap, which means nothing else that we would expect here that he's going to post um, this minus this. So 9.16, 9.16, um, 9 and then of course the netbook value didn't change. So let's say 17, let's say 18, so okay. And this one should be then of course against the netbook value costs. So this is actually our expect expectations because this would mean nothing else than before we had a netbook value of 988 in US gap layer and now after that as from a US gap perspective we have here 979.17 plus 9.16 which is then exactly the netbook value which we had before. So Let's go to the Excel and have a look at it. Um, I normally do it here, so I just put the amount here to the values. I'm using here the main accounts and important use here the posting layers as columns. And maybe let's use here a better format. Great. So uh, let's compare it. So local, so the local postings we have on the Customer account, the 2000, so correct. We have on the fixed asset account, minus 1000, so correct. We have on the accumulated depreciation, 20.83, which is correct. We have on the netbook value account, plus in, on debit side, 979.17, uh, plus we have on the sales, um, on credit side, 2000. So totally correct and the way we would have expected it. Um, the difference, so yeah, quite simple. So it's also absolutely correct because we have here on the accumulated depreciation minus 9.16 and on the net book value cost plus 9.16. So it means nothing else than uh, he did the posting. Absolutely correct. Brilliant. So and yeah, this means now, of course, as well, if you are if you have a look at the fixed asset itself, all of all three value models are sold. Um, so not this one, this one here. All three value models are sold. The netbook value is of course zero. We see it in here as well. So netbook value is here, zero is here, zero. So zero is totally zero. And yep. And let's have a look at the. Yeah, let's have a look at the balance sheet. So how the balance sheet looks like. So if you go here to the trial balance, and if I have a look here at first at the current postings, then I see here fixed asset account, which is zero from a local perspective, accumulated depreciation, which is also zero, the depreciation of 20.83, net book value costs of 979.17, and sales value costs of 2000. So exactly the way how we expect it or as well as we have it in in our um, t accounts and if we switch it to operations so us gap view can we have fixed asset zero accumulate depreciation zero which is also absolutely correct a net book value cost of 988.33 which is also correct and a sales value of as well 2000 so everything is posted was posted absolutely absolutely correct Good. So, um, yeah, if you maybe just as a short thing, if you would have scrapped the fixed asset, um, you can do it normal over, normally over a fixed asset journal. Important, you always just post the FAC, so just the local, the local, the, the local one. All the others will be um, automatically will be automatically um, derived. Choose the value type, disposal, scrap. Choose here the fixed asset. Of course, my fixed asset is not anymore available because it is already sold. Um, the offset, the offset account is then retrieved automatically and would be the net book value costs. And just leave debit credit blank and post it, and then AX would post automatically um, the three posting types. So just the scrap. So in the end, he would have done exactly the same posting with the different that with the difference that this posting in here would not have been done. 
Great. Uh, so let's have a quick look again at the fixed asset balance. Of course, not of set R log, but just of the local one. OK and OK. So we have here acquisition of um, 1000, which is correct. Depreciation of minus 20.83, which is correct. An issue, so a sales of 2000, which is correct. Um, a profit a profit and loss of um, 1020.83 and a net book value of zero. So absolutely correct. Um, we have how does it look like in US, in the US book. So let's run it. In here we have 1000 acquisition, which is correct. Depreciation of 11.67, which is correct. An issue of 2000, which is also correct. And a profit of loss, of loss and loss of 1011.67 and a net book value of zero. So also um, absolutely correct how it is shown in here. Good. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to show you as well how you can set up your own um, fixed asset, your fixed asset reports, a detailed view on fixed assets. So it is just um, in here. Er, detailed view on fixed assets. Um, detailed view on fixed assets. Mm. Okay, let me just quick check something. <laughs> okay, um, well, it seems that, that um, the detailed view on fixed asset report is not standard AX, and I'm working here really with um, a total um, standard AX. So, uh, well, in standard AX, there is actually not really a dynamic fixed asset report available, as I see. So, just this totally crappy um, <laughs> report with the fixed asset statement rows where you can add here a header <laughs> and um, your fixed assets or any kind of group and you can add here a total and then you can go to totals and you can't even add here a real filter you, because you cannot say here till nine, because you always really need to add here a fixed asset. Uh, and then you are able to print this brilliant report fixed asset statements where you can choose here the row name. Um, and then, or no, you don't even need to add it in here. Um, but the post, you can choose here then the posting layer or respectively the value model is maybe better so that you use here local and okay and okay. And then you have here this pretty nice looking um, report, which is in the end showing more or less nothing. So totally crappy. Uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, well, it looks like it is really the case that this is the best, um, the most dynamic uh, fixed asset report in standard AX. Uh, so, sorry, I cannot show, of course, this skill in this way, the um, uh, better report. So, maybe you can use then this one, uh, fixed asset balances. Of course, you always have the possibility in here to go to the fixed asset transactions and analyze it in uh, Excel. So, for example, if you use here... Um, local, then you can actually also analyze it with those figures which you have in here. Good. Um, yeah. So I'm since since I'm um, since I'm showing you actually not only fixed asset but the whole logic of the different um, layers. I'm also going to show you how you can do kind of um, just manual posting. So this was just the fixed assets. Uh, so let's assume, for example, that you have. I'm just quickly going to delete here these things again. So, and I'm also, yeah, let's quickly delete everything in here and also these kind of things. So, let's just say you have a kind of, a, you have any kind of account, doesn't, doesn't matter at all. You have here um, kind of an accrual account. Accrual and... Any kind of does, doesn't matter, actually doesn't matter at all. Um, financial link doesn't matter, doesn't make sense, doesn't make sense at all. Um, let's, yeah, maybe let's use, let's allowance, allowance for doubt. 
full doubt, full depth, and then kind of a cost account. Um, count number is totally wrong, but anyhow. So, okay, good. So let's assume we have this, we have two cases. So for example, you have um, here another another kind of posting where you have any kind of retention retention something and again against any kind of cost account cost for I don't know good okay um we have the case where we actually want to have in um, the local accounting that we have in total local accounting it should be the allowance for doubtful debt it should be let's say 1000 and in us gap so in us gap we want to have an amount of let's say 800 so there's just then a difference of 200 important is in such a case where you have differences that you also just post the difference into the operations layer so this means nothing else than let's just quickly going to create the main account for those so um, let's say what kind of stupid accounts did I use one one zero allowance for doubtful depth of course it is a balance sheet account and then six seven hundred costs for doubtful depth profit and loss and what else do I need the retention something retention something which is of course then a balance sheet account and costs for I don't know so okay good now let's have a look at the first case. So you have um, you have local in the local accounting you want to have 1,000 on the allowance for doubtful debt, and from an US perspective there are just 800. So this means first of all what you need to do is well you just need to create at first a normal general journal. Important is general journal in this case is posting into layer current. You cannot change it here <coughs> here um, in this because it is grayed out so it is always in the layer where the journal name in the end is going uh, is set up so in this case into the layer current so i just add a line and i say then here allowance for doubtful depth 1000 1000 against the Six, seven costs for doubtful depth with the cost center. Good. So this means now if I post now just the um, the local the local um, layer means nothing else than we did now. Well, just this posting that we have here, one thousand and. 1000 in here which means in the end nothing else than at the moment in both so in your local view so in your local accounting as well as in the us gap accounting it is showing 1000 um, costs in this case because um, it's always the sum of both so 1000 plus nothing is 1000 so also in the trial balance in both cases in current layer we have here Cost for doubtful depth 1000 locally, and we have also in the operations we have costs for doubtful depth as well 1000. Now uh, you need to create actually a separate journal type. So this means nothing else than you can right click here, view details, and then just click, click, click on new and then create a GJO. So general journal US gap. Of course, daily 
you can use here kind of a voucher series you can create one on your own uh, and important is you need to use here the layer operations good now you can choose it so us gap posting of course it makes sense to use a voucher series which is for example us minus something and now you need to post the difference so we want to have 800 in the us gap accounting so we need to post the difference which is well it needs to be 200 less which means nothing else than always sum so minus 1000 plus 1000 is 800 and 1000 minus 200 is 800 doubtful depth from a us gap perspective so this means nothing else than um yeah we just add in here this main account we say here we are going to post it in, um, on debit side and against the cost for doubtful depth with the cost center and we are going to post it. Of course there is no derivation at all because we are not, not anymore within the fixed assets therefore of course um, all the posting just the one posting so just the posting can be added in here and now we actually have exactly this case that we have from a local view 1000 and from a US gap view 800 so if you have a look at the trial balance um, on current we have on the doubtful depth 1000 and we have on in the operations view so from a US gap perspective the 800 in the case where you have so the second case um, where you want to make a posting somewhere just in US gap layer then you would just create just a GJO journal so for example if you have in a US gap perspective retention for something uh, 5000 and local nothing in such a case so local zero in such a case you would just create the GJO journal so you just go in here <laughs> uh, yeah So you just go in here, create a GJO journal, um, go to lines, and then you would add, so it is, you would add here the retention for something with the 5000 that I've said, and against the costs, I don't know, and then he would just post one posting in here so 5000 and 5000 so this would be you know, quite quite simple uh, in the other case where it is like this so you have 5000 here but you want to have zero in the us gap layer well what would you need to do in such a case well the same as before actually so you would need to post to create at first a gj journal so retention six seven costs four I don't know and then post this one here just in the local layer but at the time now we would have um, in US as well 5000 we would have now in uh, the local in the local gap you would have 5000 and in the US gap we would have 5000 uh, minus nothing so we would still have 5000 so not yet zero therefore you always need you would need to reverse um, this posting in the US gap layer just that you get in the end the difference so 5000 in here 6 7 costs for I don't know and the cost center and post it and then it would be correct again yeah so now it would exactly be the case that in the trial balance in the current view we would have 5000 and in the operations view so in the us gap view we would have the zero 
Good. <clears throat> so um, this was it more or less. Just one last um, thing. Uh, the th good thing about this methodology where you really always just have the difference in this layer. Um, well, you actually need to do it this way because it is how AX is um, using this kind of layer logic. Um, but as I'm going to show you a way how you can fully make it fully automated. And also the earnings <clears throat> are totally correctly posted. So you don't need to make any kind of manual posting after the year end because AX is actually going to calculate the retained earnings. So the annual, the annual profit for each layer separately. And since both layers are actually real real accounting without any kind of dummy accounts or without of uh, without any kind of um, addition, add, so additional postings, um, because this is in the end um, a difference, just a difference of, of it, uh, everything should be or is posted correctly that you don't need to have any kind of manual interactions at the year end. Good. I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, the things. And as always, if you have any questions, you can add a comment. And if you have any kind of inputs, feedbacks, or things that um, I could do better or things like this, then yeah, don't hesitate. Just add any kind of comment into the YouTube uh, video. Great. So have a nice evening and here you see you soon.